And welcome back, everybody. First quarter action here from Washington and Jefferson College. I'm Mike Shannon for CWPA TV. Bringing you Salem against Monmouth. Monmouth in the dark caps going left to right on your screen. Salem in the white caps going right to left. Salem opened up this game here, our fourth game of the day, with a goal. So taking the early 1 0 lead. Skip shot, that one goes wide on the far side. Now long outlet pass, opportunity, and they answered. Goal scored for Salem. That'd be number four, Milos Popovich. And if you're just joining us here, this is game four of six games today at Washington and Jefferson College in Washington, PA. First game of the day was 10 a.m. between the hosts, W and J, and Monmouth College. It's 16 to 11 final. Game two, uh, Salem took down Mercyhurst 21 to 20, and then Gannon took down Conn College 20 to 9. Which brings us to this game, Monmouth, Salem. Next game up following this, Mercyhurst versus Conn College. And then game six of the day, uh, Mercyhurst Conn College is at 5 p.m. Then game six of the day, 6.30 p.m. Washington and Jefferson versus Gannon. As we see a goal scored here from Salem. And that's number four. Again, Milos Popovich score early on three nothing Salem over Monmouth. Monmouth had a tough battle earlier today against W and J. W and J was out to a. 6-2 lead, Monmouth came storming back, actually took the lead at a certain point during that game, but WMJ able to pull it out. So Monmouth looking to bounce back here against Salem. And just a reminder, tomorrow as well, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we are back here, Washington Jefferson College. Connecticut College will take on Monmouth. Following that at 11.20 a.m., Salem University will take on Gannon. And then our final game of the tournament at 12.40 p.m. tomorrow, Washington and Jefferson, the hosts, will take on Mercyhurst. And the Lakers from Erie. And a reminder as well for the cap colors, Monmouth and the dark caps, represented with the dark text in the scoreboard, in the top left corner of your screen. Salem and the white caps represented with the white text in the scoreboard. The head coach for Salem, Rob Bullion, assistant coaches Justin Kassib, Andrew Tuafu, and Justin Vink, head coach for Monmouth, Peter Allis, assisted, assisted by Tom Burek. And once again, I want to give a special thank you to our hosts here, Washington and Jefferson, and head coach Nikola Melezinov for helping to organize and put together this stream to bring to you for free, courtesy of our friends over at CAP7 and the CWPA. That shot goes off the crossbar and will land out of play. Goal throw coming up. 
for Monmouth. And offensive foul called. Back the other way, Salem. And goal. Scored by number 12, Salvador Orozco. Senior from Commerce, California. So Salem up to a four goal lead early on in the first. Just about four minutes to play in the quarter. That shot save made. That ball's taken away by Monmouth only for a second until Salem recovers and scores a goal. That's number three, Saquon Miller. The redshirt freshman from Nassau, Bahamas. Pass inside. And it's going to be taken away. Long outlet pass. Given right back. Shot. Save made. Pass inside, unable to get control of that one. And Monmouth will come away with it.
Well, part of my confusion, folks, because apparently there's not one second left on the clock. We're going to step aside and come back with second quarter action right after this. Sip me up like lemonade. We both know it's bittersweet. Schumacher, co-founder of Cap7 International. Hi, I'm Wolf Weigel. Cap7 is the best ball in the world. It's used by the top athletes. When you have a Cap7 ball in the pool, you can just feel the quality, you can feel the grip. It makes you just want to pick that ball up, squeeze it, and start faking like crazy. Cap7, the best ball in the world. Welcome back, everybody. Just about to get underway here in the second quarter of action. Salem on top of Monmouth, 5 0. As we're moments away from starting up the second quarter. So Monmouth will have the ball to open up. Monmouth in the dark caps, Salem in the white caps. Now Salem. Looking to increase their lead and goal. That's Milos Popovich again. It's fourth goal of the game. So Monmouth looking to get on the board here. They shut out in that first quarter and Salem first on the board in the second. And they do. Goal scored by number 11, Jared Hankinson, senior from St. Louis, coming through in the clutch for Monmouth. Getting them on the board, six to one to score. And goal scored for Salem again. This time, courtesy of number six, it's Adam Hudson. Getting his first goal of the game. Right on the, 
And leads back up to six for Salem. Monmouth providing some good pressure there. Salem working it down on the near side. Shot save made by Kyle Jones. Sophomore getting real big right there. The close range shot. Give me an exclusion on the play. It's a power play opportunity for Monmouth. Big chance to capitalize right here, get themselves right back into this game. And great goal there from Monmouth. That's number 11, Jared Hankinson. And he has both goals so far for Monmouth. That's his lead for Salem back down to five. And the defense will come away with it and kick it back to the goalie. Jones now looking ahead. Settle for the short pass along the near side. No goal. Shot will skip and sail high above the crossbar. Exclusion is going to be called. And then I believe a quick 30 second timeout in order to set up a power play opportunity. Salem looking to get back to that six goal lead. And that shot goes off the crossbar, being chased down. Officials calling for the ball out of the water. Kick back out up top, right back to the far side. Looking for the sidewinder shot. That's blocked by the field player. Still heavy pressure. Good rotation. Oh, and Kyle Jones able to come 
come around on that one. Excuse me, that's uh, Yulin Alonso able to come around on that one. And then here's Kyle Jones coming away with it for the Fighting Scots and working it on up ahead. And that pass is taken away by Alonso and sent down the other end for Monmouth takes it back. Lob shot and goal. Monmouth goal scored by number seven, Quinton Bartram, sophomore from Dublin, Ohio. Gets his team on the board again. Seven to three is the score. Shot and goal for Salem. That goal scored by number 16, Euros Yevtich. So you have Titch. Adds to the Salem lead as Monmouth's working down the other end. I believe they're going to call a ball under here. And we head back the other way to Salem. Shot, and that one saved at the post. And that'll bring us to the end of the second quarter. So the score at the end of two, Salem eight, Monmouth three. And with that, we're gonna step aside. Halftime at Washington and Jefferson College. Eight to three, Salem on top. The power of Cap Set Customization. If you're interested in getting custom team suits, Visit cap7.com, click on custom gear at the top, and simply fill out the questionnaire. Once you do that, it arrives to us. We'll hit it, hand it to one of our sales team, and they'll walk you through the process. It's really simple. We design the suit for you at no charge. You provide us with sizes, and we produce the suits. In three weeks, you can have your fully customized team suits. Fully custom turbo water polo caps. The opportunities to design these are pretty much limitless. We can change the color of the piping. We can put any sort of logo here. We'll see 
you've got Villanova Wildcats, um, and they keep their, their logos really consistent. The other thing I want you to understand and know that you can add a third number or even a fourth number if you'd like. The other thing you'll see with our caps here in 2016, we upgraded our ear guard, um, and we've created a, a specific hole here to put on the cap stringers, which helps to prevent the breakage on the caps. Custom ball options. You'll see in my right hand here is a laser etched ball, and you can see that we have uh, 5 metercom is the one the company that had these balls made. Um, the two differences really with, with you know a custom printed ball is this ball is painted on, and the 5 meter ball this is laser etched into the ball. This is exactly how it looks. And then we have our custom balls for schools, clubs, high schools, whatever you name it. Everyone, lots of people do it. And this is actually screened on the ball. Um, but you have to do 60 balls on this side, 12 balls on the laser etch. Get your water polo gear customized by the specialists at Cap7 and Turbo. Hi, I'm Wolf Lego, three-time Olympian in water polo and PSAL swimmer of the decade. I'd like to just talk about the Safe Lane swim device. It's really a no-brainer. It blows up, uh, you put it at the end of the lane in seconds, and it's there to protect your head on any uh, time you're swimming backstroke or sort of spacing out while you're swimming freestyle. If you ever go into the wall, you're going to be completely protected. This thing's amazing. All right. For more information, visit cap7.com. Hi, I'm Wolf Lego, three-time Olympian in water polo. And welcome back, everybody. Start of the third quarter here, Washington Jefferson College. Salem in the white caps on top of Monmouth in the dark caps by a score of eight to three. And we got a goal scored for Salem. Seems quite happy about that. Gets his team another point. Nine to three the score. Salem with it on the near side. And another goal scored for Salem. This one coming from the hand of number 10, Michael Rojas. From Valle de Calca, Colombia. So coming a long way to score that goal for Salem. 10 to three now, Tigers on top of the Fighting Scots. So Salem, and they follow it up with another goal. This one scored by number nine, Robert Juhas. So that brings us to 11 to three. Salem on top of Monmouth.
And our next game up after the conclusion of this one, Mercyhurst takes on Connecticut College. That's going to start at 5 o'clock Eastern time. And following that, W&J and Gannon wrap up our evening here. 6.30 p.m. Eastern, they'll start their contest. So back in play here out of the timeout. Monmouth with it. Looking to pass to the center. Oh, it's taken away. And no goal scored. Did not cross the plane. Back the other way we go. Tigers with it. Shot off the post and in. Goal scored by number 10, Michael Rojas. That's the second of the game, second of the quarter. So Salem. Moving it into the offensive end where they've operated relatively smoothly throughout this game. That pass batted away by Salem. Still fighting for it. And Salem will come away with it. Good aggressive defense by the Tigers. That shot stopped by Kyle Jones. Jones will look deep down the other end of the pool. Exclusion's gonna be called power play opportunity for Monmouth. Let's see if they can capitalize. And we go back the other way. Exclusion has ended. For Salem. Going back and forth here. Monmouth moving up with it. Looking for the shot. Trying to push it in. And Salem able to come away with it. Yulin Alonso chasing that one to the corner. Then long pass up ahead. Looking for the shot. Field player able to cause some sort of commotion there with Salem. 
So Salem's not going to come away with a goal on that trip down the offensive end. Coming back, looks like we have an exclusion coming up. That I believe is Manuel Soto Estella. But that will warn a timeout. Under three to go in the third quarter. We're going to step aside real quick while they talk it over. We'll be right back right after this. The Cap 7 Rebounder is perfect for poolside or in-pool workouts. It bounces the ball right back to you. It's great for working on passing or just for accuracy training. Take it out of the pool too. You can have a catch whether it be baseball or softball. Get up close with the tennis ball for hand-eye coordination. Or hit the hardwood and work on your dribbling and passing for basketball. Or even footwork drills for soccer. Setup is simple. First, take the rebounder out of the box and lay it flat on the surface with the net facing down. Pull the stand up and place the single bar in the allotted spot. Then, slide the peg on the bottom and place the pin up top. You can adjust the angle by removing the pin and sliding the And we're going to come back here as we are out of the timeout. And Salem unable to come away with anything here. So back to Monmouth we go. <laughs> unable to come away with anything on that one. Salem takes back over. Deep in the corner here, looking for some help after the ordinary foul. Back out to the top, looking through his options. Decides to shoot, save made. Now pass up ahead, shot and goal. Salem back on the board again. That goal by number 10, Michael Rojas. It's his third one of the quarter. Looking for that pass to the center. That one swatted away by the field defender. Shot goes off the post, and a goal will be scored. So Salem on the board again, 14 to three. Back and forth we go. So 
So that'll bring us to the end of quarter number three. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action from Washington and Jefferson College. Salem 14, Monmouth 3. At Cap 7, we've been able to grow a lot since 2004. Um, you know, we started out really small, as small as can be, you know, working out of our home, our garage, storing stuff, and carports. Um, and, you know, cash flow is always an issue with, a, with a, a new company, and we've been slowly been able to get to a point where we're, we're giving hundreds of thousands of dollars away to different uh, conferences, leagues, sections, CIF sections, and really being able to support the program, and it's been pretty cool to see that progress. Um, and every year we're constantly trying to do more, support more programs, um, get all over the country, and now moving towards, you know, sponsoring water polo all over the world. So when we founded CAP7, you know, there were a few water polo companies out there, but, the, you know, it wasn't too much. But none of them were ever really doing anything to help the sport or give it back. They were, they were growing, um, but never giving back. And we, when we started our company, we wanted to make sure that, you know, if we got bigger along the way, that we would definitely be doing that. And we, we started that from day one. Um, so, you know, if you're considering, why should I buy from CAP7 versus X, Y, and Z company? Um, you know, we're former players. Everyone in our company is involved with water polo in one way or another. So if you're considering making a purchase in, in the sport of water polo, you know, we'd, we'd love to think that you can support a company that is supporting you. We're constantly giving back um, to the sports, sponsoring tournaments, leagues, CIF sections, um, college teams. We're always giving back. And if you can support us, we'll continue to support you. We'll continue to help push the sport along, continue to advocate for, for better rules, um, for all kinds of things that really is going to take our sport to the next level and that's something we're always thinking about and pushing for. We're not just trying to sell a bulk amount of suits and caps or balls. Um, that's really not what it's about. It's about making better products and helping give back to the sport and take it to the next level. Yeah, when we're developing any product uh, you know, for our companies. So we're just underway here in the fourth quarter. Salem 14, Monmouth 3. Next game up at 5 o'clock, Mercyhurst versus Connecticut College. Long shot and goal for Monmouth. Pass along the far side. Turnaround shot and goal. So Salem answers right back. 15 to four. And Monmouth comes back with a goal of their own. That goal scored by number six, Cave Moedetti. Redirect shot. And goal. Scored for Salem. It's number four, Milos Popovich. Been quiet ever since that first half. But gets his team on the board again. 16 to six, to five, excuse me.
And another goal scored. Mammoth, number 11, Jared Hankinson. Providing the offense for Monmouth. Lob shot and goal. Scored for Monmouth. It's number 15. Tommy Schneider, senior from Perka CPA. Long pass. And we're going to get a ball under called, so it's going to go right back to Salem. Swimming out of his own goal to get it. And passes on up ahead. Walking on in, unopposed. One on goalie. And goal scored. Just held on just long enough. Get the goalie to bite. It's number 15, Tommy Schneider.
And another goal scored for Monmouth. This one by number 20, Joseph Addison, the freshman from Eads, Tennessee. It's a five meter penalty shot. Great save on the penalty shot by the goalie. Another goal scored for Monmouth. Looks like the comeback is happening just a little bit too late. And goal scored for Salem. Number 11, Manuel Soto Estella. Shot goes off the goalie, off the crossbar, and will trickle out to the corner. Corralled in by Monmouth, and the shot will go wide. And that ball will sneak its way into the back of the cage. Another goal for Salem. This one. Number 12, Salvador Orozco. Lob shot and goal. So Monmouth and Salem just trading goals at this point. That goal scored by number seven, Quinton Bartram. Salem's going to just sit on this one and we'll wind the clock down.
Ref asking for the ball out of water. And we'll reset. And a goal. It's number 11, Jared Hankinson. Getting Monmouth's 12th goal. And that will do it. So the final score in this one, Salem 18, Monmouth 12.